Welcome to Learn Law Better. Did you just read U.S. Carroll and discover the learned hand formula? Are you trying to figure out how to use B is less than P times L? Are you a humanities major who thought you would never see algebra again? Stay tuned to the end as I explain how to use the formula on an exam and in the practice of law. Also, don't forget to hit the share button if you find this episode useful. Hi, this is Bo Bies, and today I want to talk to you about the Learned Hand Formula, which comes out of the U.S. v. Carroll case that I discussed in another episode. In establishing that the defendant had breached his duty of care, Judge Learned Hand decided to discuss unreasonableness by using algebra rather than English. In negligence trials, when the standard of care is the reasonably prudent person, juries use their common sense in deciding if the defendant was unreasonable. Learned Hand was uncomfortable with using this unstructured approach, so he decided to explain unreasonableness with the formula B is less than P times L, where B is the burden of taking adequate precautions, P is the probability of harm, and L is the gravity of the harm. In my last episode, I walked through the analysis of U.S. versus Carroll using this formula. Today, we would call the hand formula either a cost-benefit or a risk-utility formula. So first, let's look at it from a cost-benefit perspective. The cost is what the wrongdoer is potentially imposing on society, and the benefit is what the wrongdoer received for his action or inaction. In U.S. v. Carroll, the potential cost was the barge coming unmoored and sinking. And on the other side of the equation was whatever benefit the sailor received by his unauthorized day off in New York City. When we compare the two, we can safely conclude that the sailor's conduct was unreasonable, since the cost he imposed on society far outweighed his sightseeing excursion. Now, let's look at this from a risk-utility perspective. This is where we compare the risk imposed through the action of the defendant with the utility of what he did. Going back to U.S. versus Carroll, the risk the sailor imposed is the boat's possible damage. And the utility was a day of fun in New York City. Since the risk he imposed was greater than the utility he received, the conduct is viewed as unreasonable and therefore a breach of duty. Let's shift focus and think about how to use this on an exam or in real life. In practice, you will never use this formula with a jury. Also, on an exam, there is no need to cite to the formula. By the way, Learned Hand never meant the formula to be cited at jury trials. What Learned Hand and your professor wants is for you to use the thought process that is embedded in the formula. Pretend it's exam day and you just finished discussing duty. The next paragraph will discuss breach of duty and we'll start something like this. The next issue is whether the sailor breached his duty of care by failing to remain on the barge. Breach of duty is conduct that falls below the standard of care, which in this case requires a determination of whether the conduct was unreasonable. By the way, I hope you notice that I'm using the IRAC formatting method which I discuss in one of my other episodes. Okay, on to the analysis portion of the essay. In determining unreasonableness, all of the circumstances must be examined. The harm occurred on a barge in a very busy harbor during wartime. It is clear the barge would not have sunk if the sailor had been on board, as required by his contract. He abandoned his post without a good reason, thereby endangering his boat and other boats in the harbor. Because of the danger he imposed, and which in fact did occur, his conduct was unreasonable and amounts to a breach of duty. I hope you notice that I never used B is less than P times L, or used the phrases cost-benefit or risk-utility, and that is how the Learned Hand formula should be used, as a way for you to think of the risks, the benefits, costs, and utility, and for you to use them in determining if the conduct was reasonable or unreasonable. If you'd like to see more episodes that can help you succeed, hit the subscribe button. Also, don't forget to check out learnlawbetter.com where you'll find more resources to help you get ahead, including my blog, newsletter, and exam bank. 
Thanks for watching.